Hey, me and Matt here, and just finished watching, actually, Bound for Glory. I know that Killer Kyle and myself did a prediction video for it, and now yeah, I just did the Extreme Morals review on Tuesday, so, well, I have, whatever, it doesn't matter. This was a hell of a fucking show, and I mean... The surprises in the gauntlet match are very cool. I'll get into that in a while, but yeah. I mean, this was a very good fucking show. I really think that, you know, despite not watching it at the time, I could have did a play-by-play, -play, and that's unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, here we go. Now, obviously, missed the pre-show. You know, you have the Bullet Club of Ace Austin, Chris Bay, and Juice Robinson, who defeated Alex Zane, Laredo Kid, and Trey Miguel. So, you know, well, there it is. You have the other match. So, it says dark match and then pre-show match. So I'm not quite sure what the hell that was. Brian Myers defeating Dirty Dango in his debut on Impact Wrestling. And again, you know, I think that this guy has had a stellar career in WWE, in NXT, WWE, you know, going into NWA and the Independence, obviously. But Dirty Dango definitely is one of the most interesting wrestlers. I just wish that he wouldn't do the fucking leg drop all the time. Obviously, it messes up your knee a lot, but never, but yeah, this was a good match, and this was, in fact, a digital media championship match, and Brian retained, so. So, we get into the first match. We've got the X Division Championship. Frankie Kazarian versus Mike Bailey. Speedball versus the Heavy Metal Rebel. And I mean, to me, this match solidified what these two could do. I mean, it was high flying, it was just crazy, in my opinion. And I mean, you have Mike Bailey diving into the ring, and what, what he usually does. And Frankie follows it up with the DDT. We have just craziness all around. And I mean, we didn't know what was going to happen. He was in a runner for Frankie. And basically, yeah, a submission. And of course, Mike tapped out, which has Frankie Kazarian as the new X Division champion. So this was a very good match to start the show. And yeah, also first of many matches, and we'll see who else changes hands. It won't be the first one, I guarantee you that. So you have Mickey James versus Mia Yim in a career-threatening match. Now, to me, this was, you know, one of the things where if Mickey lost, she would have to lose her career and whatever but this was a really good match there's a hint that Mia Yim will go back to WWE I'm not sure exactly when but I think if that happens I hope it works out but at the same time you know I think she's doing good since she came back to Impact Wrestling this was a really good match too and of course Mickey wins, but then it's just kind of can't wait to see what else she can do or if there's going to be other matches. Again, she's not that old. I don't know why she has this whole, it's kind of like Ric Flair in a way with this whole, we're going to have you with all these matches and if you lose, you can retire. But at the same time, Rick was in his 50s. Mickey is only in her early 40s. Early to mid 40s at least. So, 
I think, you know, unless there's, you know, or her wanting to retire so she could be on the farm, or, you know, yeah, be on the farm, be with her family, take care of her son, who knows, but I think I know she still has more in the tank. So you have a take team match, and yes, they have a new name, the Death Dolls, Jessica Havoc, or Jessica, with a CK, and La Vaya Loca, Ty Valkyrie, versus Vexed, Chelsea Green, and Deanna Perrazzo. Now this match was pretty fucking cool, and I mean, both these teams are very impressive, and again, it was another who was going to win, you know, and like I said, with the first match, it wouldn't be the only title change. And of course, the Death Dolls ended up winning the Knockouts Take Team Championships. But, you know, again, there's that rumor, you know, Chelsea Green might be going back to WWE. And I think that it would be a good idea because you have a lot of unfinished business. And I think when she got injured and let go, it was trying a bad time and I didn't feel like she had a fair shake in WWE which is unfortunate I mean with Matt Cardona at least he spent like a few years in WWE it's the same with Brian Myers they both spent a long time in WWE now I mean Brian didn't get no championships besides the take team championships but Matt was the U.S. Champion, and then, you know, the Intercontinental Champion. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. But, I mean, Chelsea and WWE, I, again, I won't say that's a bad thing. I think that's going to be fucking amazing. The Impact World Tag Team Champions We've got the Kingdom versus Motor City Machine Guns. And, I mean... So this was a good match, and you had Maria in their corner and everything, and, you know, you had no idea how this was going to go. You know, you honestly thought that the veterans were going to win, and I think there was a point where Mike kicked Maria from the outside. I, I could be wrong on that, but, you know, it was, uh, it, yeah, basically Matt who did the... Legs on the ropes to get the win and retain the titles. I don't know how the fuck the ref doesn't recognize that, but whatever. We have the 20 person and gender match. Call your shot. Which I think is a cool concept because I mean, it's always cool to see an under gender match where it's a fair fight. I mean, when you look at the WWE. You might have seen at ECW, or not ECW, of course, because Tommy Dreamer would pal drop you Miguel Cuddy, but like WCW, where women will slap a male wrestler, a female, you know, whatever, and there was no retaliation, but this was fair game. Which I, you know, it's a sport, let's see what happens, and I mean, so you have Eric Young and Rich Swan. And, you know, I won't go through everything, but Joe Henry, Moose, Bully Ray, Bully Ray, Rhino, and Tommy Dreamer both returned to Impact. I mean, you have Tasha Steeles, Johnny Swinger, you know, fucking Steve Backlund, Black Cardona, Moose, just to name a few. And I mean, this was pretty cool. And it was just one of those things where, yeah, you have Bully Ray win. And it's like, honestly don't know how to feel about that. Or because here's a guy that already had an Impact Championship run. I mean, it was like 10 years ago, but still. And, you know, it's 
Kind of like, okay, so you want to do the young man's game, but he's 50 years old. It's like, kind of, they're all on that age range now, and the veterans and all of that shit. But, I mean, it's just kind of too bad that we didn't see Rhino hit. God! 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 But, you know, it was pretty cool to see Bully Ray back. And, I mean, well... You know, find out what happens in the near future with them. You know, it's a shame that Brother Diva can't wrestle no more. And, you know, Spike or Runt or whatever, you know. He isn't really doing much. He, whatever. So, yeah, it'll be fun to see what happens with that. Would it be cool to see him as the champion again? Sure. I just don't think it'll last long, obviously. It's almost like, you know, okay, what do we do now? Type thing. So I have the Knockouts Women's Championship. We got Jordan Grace, who defeated Masha Slamovich. And this was pretty hard hitting. You know, it's one of those things, too, that I think that Masha is kind of a good fighter, a good wrestler. I don't know. I haven't seen too much from her, but yeah, Jordan won retaining. You thought maybe it was going to be Masha who won, but I mean you know what? Jordan as the champion. We'll see what happens. They might have a rematch in the future. You know? Who knows? And then it might be Masha, Masha, Masha. But we'll see. On the main event, we have Josh Alexander, the champion, versus Eddie Edwards of Honor No More. And so this match was awesome. And of course, you have you know, German Suplex City, bitch. And I think that Josh Alexander at one point, or it might have been Eddie who took the mat out of the ring to expose the wood or whatever. So. Yeah, this was cool. There was even a, a suplex on the ramp. So, this was a good match. Obviously, it was kind of a close call, but Josh Alexander ended up winning the match and maintaining the title, which prompted Honor No More to come out and beat the shit out of the walking weapon. And then, of course, you have Bully Ray coming out. Now you thought, okay, Bully Ray might join Honor No More. I mean, he was a part of a Ring of Honor for the last little while. So, yeah, it didn't happen. Both Josh and Bully turned around, and yeah, it was two against those guys. <laughs> so, yeah, and then of course you have Josh and Bully Ray face-to-face. -face. Josh holding up the title. And, yeah, so Josh Alexander and Bully Ray, I think that's going to be a good match. Like, like I said, I don't know how long this is going to last if Bully Ray wins, but we'll see. Anyways, yeah, Bomb for Glory was pretty, pretty cool. Anyways, talk to you later. Bye. So, you know that them cutting WCW was a long time coming. But, you know, I think that there's this myth out there that Jamie Kelly is no, a that's why he you know, took pleasure at cutting WCW. I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, you look at some of his earlier interviews, and 